Hey there. Today I thought we would talk about one of my personal pens, the Classic Pens LB6, and one of the last pens I've, I've added to my collection. I'm really not looking to buy a whole lot um, more, but you know. Anyway, I have done a review of the LB6 years ago. I have done a re-review of this LB6 because I wanted to give you a bit of an update. But the purpose of this video is to really talk about why I own this pen, how this came to be. So these personal pen videos to me are more story videos, more so that than, than, than evaluating the pen because that's what the reviews are for. So in 2017 I was at the DC Pen Super Show, I met Andy Lambrus, second time in my life I met him, and uh, he had his LB6s out and they are quite expensive, but he said I will, I will lend you one to review. So when I got back home he did indeed send me a brown one. That one was reviewed again years ago. You can check out that review if you want to. And I sent it back. And that was one of the pens that I kind of couldn't stop thinking about. And then in uh, 2018, summer 2018, all of a sudden Andy emailed me and said, I'm going to be in Toronto and we were living in Oshawa at the time, close to Toronto, and he said, do you want to meet up? And I said, sure, actually on Friday, there's a meeting of the pen club in Toronto, maybe you want to join in? He said, sure. He came over and he had a little briefcase, a wooden briefcase, with all kinds of prototypes. It was fantastic, it was a wonderful evening. He was he's a very engaging person, uh, and um, he showed us all these, these prototypes he has, things he's working on, and because the prototypes, I'm, I'm, not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to go into detail here, if you don't mind. And then at some point, Aziza kind of poked me in the ribs and said, ask him, ask him about an LB6. I know you really want one. So I said, Andy, uh, you got any LB6s left? And he had this big sort of diabolical smile on his face. And he said, what's your favorite color of the LB6? And he knows that I have an LM1. He knows I have an LB5 in the red. And he knows that I've reviewed them. And he, you know, so he knows, he knows. I said, well, uh, you know, it's the red. He said, I have one red left, and it's number six out of ten, right? They're limited to ten apiece per color. But these are expensive pens, and when I say expensive, I'm, I'm, I'm talking very expensive. So the, the, uh, the, the, the fit and finish, uh, uh, 3,500 US. So this is not a pen that you just, you know, snap up and, and buy. So I said, well, you know, it, it, they, are, they are expensive, and... Um, he said, no, but we, we can talk a bit. So he did some calculations. He offered me a discount. I'm not going to repeat what discount, okay? Because this was a, a deal between him and me. But to me, it was a very appealing discount. And I said, sure. So I made the down payment and I made another payment when the pen was ready. And now I have it, all right? So it's been long journey but these are handmade pens the um, the segments are, are actually the pen is handmade but the the segments too are handmade and he told me and he told me the story of how if I remember correctly because the pen slants down a little bit the barrel again if I remember correctly these facets have to be made at a, a very very small angle something like like a, a two degrees distension Subtension. Yeah, mixing up terms here. So a very, very small offset to compensate for the tapering of the barrel, again, if I remember correctly. And he said, Paul Rossi does this by hand. And he's one of the few people who can work in those tolerances by hand without using computer-aided tools. If you take that into account, you start to understand a bit more why these pens are so expensive. Now, you can have long discussions about whether that pen is worth it, if it should be that expensive. I'm not going to have the discussion because to me it was worth it, right? And this is something I've said before, if that pen is worth it to you, well then that pen is worth it at that point. So, I have this. It is a very large pen. It's especially very girthy. It's a number six nib. It's very girthy. It's very big. It sort of posts, but it doesn't really need posting. Um, very big, very girthy, but I find it very, very comfortable. And it has grown on me to an incredible degree. Incredible degree. So, 
I'm very happy. It's also a nice keepsake of that evening with, with Andy. We, we spent in a restaurant talking to him, talking about pen stuff, etc. He also signed one of my, uh, I think, Founder Pens of the World, uh, the, 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 the one of the books he wrote, which, which was really nice because I really like that kind of stuff. So I'm very, very happy. I'm very happy to have this pen, have it in my personal collection. I think it's a very nice story. It's a nice, um, yeah, as I said, nice emotional uh, uh, story behind that one. I will show you how it writes. I'll, I'll do that next. And that's pretty much it. And I'm very aware it's ludicrously expensive. Don't worry. I know. I know. Okay? I'm very aware. But I love it. And that's all there's to it. So, let's do it. Let's, let's see how it writes. So, why do I like this pen so much? Well, I do find it a very pleasant, whoops, pleasant writer. Uh, it's a, a medium nib and the ink is Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. Guick. skip there but I think beyond that nothing it's a very pleasant writer I enjoy using it I find it very comfortable and I, I think I have grown more appreciative of the the, the, the girthier pens or something I don't know um, but it's grown on me since I did the original review a lot and this was the kind of pen I just couldn't really let go of as I said so very very interesting and a, a pen that I really 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 enjoy using so I'm very very happy to have this and this is why this one is in the personal collection where it shall remain hope this was interesting hope this was useful and I'll gladly see you later bye bye